And I'm afraid to think I really am. Um... I think that race could tear this country apart. I think that the present quiescence might not last. Um, to be blunt about it, I th think that certain black organizations have played into the hands uh, of those who do not wish them well. I think this is very difficult for a white man to talk about because it suggests a pr certain paternalism about me knowing better or suffering as much uh, as the black man does in this country. But you see, history has a terrible velocity and I'm an old man right now in terms of the race question because I started in covering Little Rock, sit-ins, and Dr. King. But I covered him mostly in the South. And the genius of Dr. King's program was there's no way to really fight love. Uh, Bulldog, um, what was Connor's name? Bulldog Connor, wasn't it? Bull Connor. In, uh, I, I, I keep thinking this. I've got to tell the story that I interviewed him at the Atlantic City Convention. I never met him in my life. And a horde of people surrounded us. And finally, I wanted to get out and get to another story. And I said, Bull, can you get me out of here? And he said, Sandy, if I'd known you were coming, I'd have brought my police dogs to clear a path. <laughs> um, there was no way to deal with that except to just yield to it. But you see, almost the moment when all the Civil Rights Acts were passed, white America thought that was the end to it. Okay, we brought them up to the line. Now let them catch up with the rest of us. But when they looked up, we were finally about 50 yards down the field, and blacks still had weights attached to their legs. Um, so I can't say that a George Wiley ought to act differently or a Jesse Jackson ought to act the way I want him to act. But the thing that I fear is given the mood of this country today, that any demonstrations of violence on the part of blacks will be met quite firmly by those in this country who have the monopoly on the means of violence. There's a story in one of the local papers today about Southern University and a kind of a monster tank. It's not even a tank, it's like a big caterpillar tractor with all kinds of, it's like a dreadnought to deal with a campus riot. Now, if that's the mood that some law enforcement agencies have in this country, uh, if we are told we won't be allowed any more permissiveness, that like children we will be dealt with firmly, I don't think that I'm very uh, optimistic that black demonstrations or eruptions of black violence will be dealt with in an enlightened way. I hope I'm wrong, but I haven't got much grounds for optimism. But this office isn't, this auditorium isn't representative of America. It's representative of Ames, Iowa. You've got to understand I'm sorry to say you've got to, you do understand what it's like to go into these industrial cities in Ohio and Michigan and Pennsylvania, Illinois, Milwaukee, and talk to the blue collar workers who are tired of hearing liberals 
talk to them about what they have to do with their children when they're living out in the suburbs. Uh, when they see or think they see blacks living on welfare, driving non you know, just totally imaginary Cadillacs up to get their welfare checks, and are prey to people who would like to make them think blacks are the enemy. When that happens, when the repression you speak about, if it takes place, takes place, I can't be optimistic about what they will think. Don't think this audience is America. It's not. I think this audience might be horrified. But look, a country that could absorb Kent State and Jackson State uh, and not bring those people to the bar of justice may be a country that can tolerate a good deal more. I don't know. One of the interesting things to me about the Indians in Washington is they caught on years later about how to get attention. But the blacks shouldn't generalize about what the Indians did and got away with in Washington because America can get over its sense of guilt about the blacks. It doesn't feel threatened by the Indians. So all I can think of is the mood right now is very dicey in this country. And I hope black leadership, which I must say to you in honesty, is terribly fragmented and has a way of devouring its own children, uh, ought to think right now very carefully about how not to be provoked. I know white men have been telling blacks that for 200 years in this country, but in honesty, I would be very reluctant to incite you in any way uh, because I think there could be a terrible reckoning. This country is still a very violent country. It's no secret to you who's got the monopoly on violence in this society. I know I haven't answered your question, but I've tried, but it's, it's terribly difficult. I take one more? Yes, sir. I've been saying since 1964 or 65 that George Wallace would be the determinant force in American politics for at least a decade. You can stretch it out even further now. Um, George Wallace, from the pictures at least, seems to be more active, seems to be recovering, and um, will have a good deal to say about how politics are shaped in the society. I'll say this in his behalf. He's probably a good deal more honest about his attitude on race than a good many other people are in this society. I've seen him. He's not a racist, he's a segregationist. But I've seen less hypocrisy on his part with blacks than some others that I won't mention. George Wallace is a force to be continually reckoned with in this society. He is not by any means out. He may never be president. He may never get within striking distance of being president. But had George Wallace gone into Wisconsin after Florida, he'd have won Wisconsin. If he had spent two days instead of one in Pennsylvania, he'd have might have broken even with McGovern and Humphrey. If he'd spent three days, he'd have won Pennsylvania. George Wallace speaks for a lot of people in this country who feel that they are being oppressed by whom they don't know with the new sympathy that he's gained by what happened to him. He is still, I think, the predominant political force in this society. And you watch as he gets stronger how he will emerge as that force. Every politician will be looking over his shoulder, wondering what Wallace is going to say next. Thank you. I thank you very much for coming.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Senator Van Oker. Good night.